We're only a couple months into this brand new ban list, and well, I like to have a pastime of discussing ban lists and things that could happen. So let's talk about mid-format ban list. How are things going? Let's dive on into it, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most Avril R32 here and destroy the ever living boo boo brown stain. Off of that like and subscribe button as well as that ding dong Taco Bell notification bell so you can be part of the A gang. I haven't said that in a hot minute and we can keep on climbing even higher that 1300 ladder. I can't wait to get to 1337. That's, uh, that's an old joke from back in the day. Anyway, hope you all having a fantastic day. Thank you so much for the support. I have been thinking about what we could be seeing getting hit on our next ban list. Now, I do want to preference that obviously we've only got two, at least North American YCSs under our belt. Obviously there's been a couple other ones. We had that one that had like 270 something odd people in Bolivia. It was a seven round YCS. It ended in like five minutes, basically. <laughs> like it was that small of a YCS. Uh, look, that was a big regional with a YCS name slapped on it. Makonko is a good deck, but I feel like it's tier two at best. I think that it winning a YCS in that vacuum of a re of regard um, doesn't mean that the deck is suddenly tier one. You know, they're going to do Acid Golem, Geonator, Traverser, hit you with that and whatever. That's cute, cool, whatever. Um, it, it's not tier one in my book. I also don't think that regardless of where it wins a YCS, whether it's North America or otherwise, I don't think the Makonko is going to get hit. And we also don't have Centurions yet. And on top of that, on top of that, with those two things being said, um, I don't think that we're going to get a ban list until at the earliest December. And even then, it's probably going to be more like January and at the latest February. Because right now, the format is pretty diverse. You know, um, Capital G actually put it really well in a video today where he said there's probably about 15 to 16 different decks that you could play and see some form of success with, right? And I completely agree with that. You know, with it being a diverse format, we may see a lot of generic cards get hit on the next ban list. But what are some things that should be hit, at least now that we've had some time to digest this list, this format, and kind of see how things develop? Obviously, we don't have Valiant Smashers yet. We don't have Centurions. But outside of Centurions suddenly somehow being tier zero and just dropping King Calamities all over the place like it's nobody's business, I don't see us getting any sort of ban list before between December to February. So do keep that in mind. Um, even then, I don't feel like Centurion outside of some sort of tier zero FTK thing that I don't think is gonna happen with the deck. It's not that good. We also don't have Bonfire yet until in 2024 because Centurion Trudea is a pyrotype and it can be searched, but I digress. Um, Centurion, I don't think is gonna be getting hit on this ban list. Something that I think will get hit though, following the OCG, Kelbeck and Aigido, and I think Keldeo and Medora were also banned in the OCG. I know Kashtira Tier Element was put to one. The TCG needs to follow that here, uh, just like what the OCG did. I've been saying for several ban lists now that Aigido and Kelbeck need to be taken out back behind the barn and shot in the nuts because Aigido and Kelbeck are just busted cards. Keldeo and Medora being able to have graveyard manipulation, you know, sending stuff back in the deck, it's insane. Um, obviously, you're not milling people with Exchange of the Spirit or milling a bunch of cards, having three Aikido, three Kelbeck, and all that. But these cards are just still so inherently broken, they just need to go. You know, the reason why that they got hit in the OCG was because OCG players wouldn't stop playing Tier Element. You know, it was the new Mermel Water deck. You know, I remember years ago when Mermel was Tier 1, uh, a guy that I knew in my local community here years ago, I remember he said, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! players will play Water until their dick falls off. Because so many people played water, so many people loved water decks. They would play Mermail, Abyss, they would play whatever they could that was a water deck until their decks fell off. Because just people loved the water deck for whatever reason. I didn't care for Mermail Atlanteans back in the day, but besides the point, I digress. <laughs> um, people will play tier until their deck falls off. It's the new water deck is what I'm trying to say. And I do feel that Konami should follow the way of the OCG and definitely put cash tier a tier element to one as well as ban the four Ishizu cards that we just mentioned. On top of that, I do think Rescue Ace is going to see some kind of hit. I think we're going to see possibly the Diabell Star package hit in some way, shape, or form. Maybe the wanted Seeker Sinful Spoils, Secret Rare that's $80. That's a lot of S's. Um, maybe that could go to one. Maybe Black Witch goes to one, even though I think most builds play one, maybe two. 
depending, you know, semantics at that point, um, because it is a pretty good consistency engine and using the simple spoil snake eyes spell gets you to the level one jet synchron and then you can make plays from there. Uh, you can also play that in Centurion, but I feel like the Horus engine is just better because using the simple spoil package commits you to a Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss and that doesn't stop Nib. So it's like, why are you even playing that package? I don't feel like the Horus cards are going to get hit at all because as good as the Horus cards are, they can potentially be bricks if you don't see the M Seti, which side note, I don't know how Horus Tier Element is doing so well because I tried building Horus Tier Element and I got my butthole stomped in every time I tried it. I'm sticking with straight tier and playing Winda. Like, I'm fine. <laughs> Um, but I don't think that that stuff's really going to get hit. And as much as like, I wouldn't mind seeing like Crimson Dragon get hit just because the, the King Calamity abusiveness of it is just ridiculous. I don't think, um, I almost said King Calamity. I don't think Crimson Dragon is going to get hit. King Calamity is only going to get hit if it's a problem. And then at that point, people just move to like a Quasar Dragon play or something like that. They just move to a different good level 12 synchro or like, I don't know, Majestic Star Dragon, like, you know, whatever the case may be, right? Um, but outside of like those hits to tier and some consistency hits to rescue ace, whether that's hydrant to one or preventer to one or airlifter to one, emergency to one, um, it's going to be interesting to see how hard Konami hits things because usually around like January, February time, when we do get a new list, they tend to scorch earth a lot of things, something that does need to be hit. And you can put me on record for this. You can take my butt cheeks and put them in the fireplace if you want, <laughs> Talents and thrusts need to go. Those cards are busted. Like, you can already tell, like, very short into this format, especially with the release again in Ken now more than ever before, talents and thrusts need to go in the garbage, ladies and gentlemen. Like, if we're not going to be hitting hand traps in any way, if we're not going to hit floodgates, you gotta hit thrust and talents. Talents having the effect of basically three banned cards is insane. Thrust being able to search you anything combined with again and Ken is insane. And like, I know that like, it's not 100% consistent to be able to open up Ken or Gen with a thrust. Like that's basically a two card combo, assuming the opponent has no interruptions. But if that goes off, like thrust may as well say triple tactics talent number two, like how we have wing dragon guardian of the fortress number two, like it may as well be because thrust gets you to the fucking talents. So it's like, you're just playing more copies of talents. I saw decks. Uh, even today, I still see some decks from time to time where they play three talents and three thrusts. I'm like, you're playing six copies of talents in a 40 card deck. Like, what is happening? Like, because those cards are just that good. I saw it more when thrust first came out. I don't see that as much anymore. Mostly, I see like two to three talents with a copy of thrust. But those cards got to go, ladies and gentlemen. Like, a lot of people say Lightning Storm went to two because of the fact that thrust is legal. And now with Gen and Ken in the game... Yeah, I think Thrust really needs to go. Talents needs to be checked somehow. I think if we had Thrust and Talents at one, I think that that would really change the dynamic because now you can't commit multiple cards of non-engine to a triple tactic package. You know, you get one and one, and like if you open up both, then like you use your extra space now with, with non-engine now that they're both at one to play like either D barriers, evenlies, something, but you don't have as much flexibility to where like, if you do open up thrust and talents, you can't go thrust to grab another talents to be, you know, ahead of the game next turn if the opponent uses a monster effect on your turn. Like that's insane, right? So I think that we should, should definitely, I don't think could, I think should definitely see some hits to that because that that's just insane to me. And that's what's weird about having a multi-format format meta um, because of the fact that there is a lot of things that you could hit and it kind of makes you wonder, you know, should they go all the way and just have a scorched earth or should they just hit a couple things? Something else that they should hit because it's just going to be a problem for years to come, Eradicator. I'm sure some people are going to say, Avery, Eradicator is not a problem anymore. But remember when it was... You know what I mean? Like, it's no longer a problem, at least kind of right now, unless you're playing against Labyrinth and you open up all spells or all traps and then your butthole is just going to be hurting for the rest of your life. It's going to always be a problem. It's going to be cropping its ugly head in. It's like that drunk step uncle who comes in for the Christmas party that you didn't invite, but it's here anyway. Uh, it needs to go. It, it, it just, like the drunk uncle, it needs to go. So banning that would be fantastic. Uh, I mean, obviously they could play like Deck Debbie and Full Force Virus, but I mean, that's just semantics at that point. And outside of that, like, I, so this is going to be my hot take and I'll end the video on this. I feel like Super Poly should be hit in some way. Now hear me out on this. 
You have to keep in mind that in Phantom Nightmare, when we get the new Ubel stuff, which yes, I'm getting a case of Phantom Nightmare because I want to play the new Ubel stuff so bad. We have a way to search Super Poly now. It's called Mature Chronicle. Now, granted, you have to get five counters on it and then remove those five counters to search a Super Poly. It can't be ashed. It's not very good. I understand that. But the fact that now with the new Ubel fusion, the Das Liebe Watcher thing, it literally says one Ubel monster plus one or more effect monsters. The opponent has five or six monsters on their board. You establish a Ubel monster. You activate Super Poly, pitch a card. You clean up their entire board. You summon out the fusion and do a buttload of burn damage. Is that something that's like going to be insanely tier zero good? No, probably not. But it wouldn't surprise me that Konami would go out of the way to do something weird like, hey, we're putting Super Poly to two because Eternal Favorite does the same thing as Super Poly. It fuses on both sides of the field, which because it has the word favorite in its name, it can be searched by Flame Wingman Infernal Rage. You should never do that because that's garbage, but that is something that you can do, which is really funny. So I, I don't know. I don't think Super Poly is going to get hit. I think that's way too much of a stretch, but God, it's definitely one of those cards that when it resolves it just stops the chain links there and it's busted and i don't know maybe we'll see it get hit because the new Bell support probably not it's definitely my hot take for this this video although i'm sure some people will say i've got multiple hot takes in this video but guys let me know what you think these are just sort of like somewhat early format i think more mid format thoughts of what we could see on our next ban list within the next couple months i do think it's gonna be a scorched earth list i think it's gonna be a lot a lot of changes um, but I don't think stuff like Centurion is going to get hit. I think Centurion will be a tier one deck, but unless it's like just topping everything, I don't think it's going to be getting hit hard on the list, if at all. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, and I will see you in the next video.